the divine chasm. Is this supposed to be divine misspelled or, or what? Or a device misspelled. <laughs> Either way. I guess it was supposed to be divine misspelled because it's that one chasm between the two halves that uh, appeared when the lightning strike happened. Basically, he said, wow, that's what I call a big hole, only he called it a huge chasm. Also, I don't think chasm is said chasm, I think it said chasm. Yeah. But okay. That guy, that... Uh, O'Reilly, did you... Uh, I, don't, I don't remember if I asked you, did you listen to the monologue of that guy from the first episode that I uh, cut before when we were recording and then I cut it into there and I gave you the link afterwards? Uh, nope, I completely forgot about that. Well, if you listened to that, you would have uh, noticed that the guy is actually a pretty decent voice actor sometimes, even if those radio transmissions later are completely emotionless and robotic. Uh, the, uh, the way he says his monologue is pretty uh, nice. Let's just say it like that. Also, I think I, I might jump down there. Uh, and uh, it, it's surprising to hear him like pronouncing words what I think are is uh, an incorrect way so then again he's probably German like the author so maybe he's just also really good at pronunciation uh, what was I going to say yeah, something else I was going to say something else um, I forgot ah yes the Intin Antonio's thing so imagine if I was making like H7 for those not in the know, it's the big series M project that I'm re I was restarting many times and going to restart again if I ever get around to doing it again even. Uh, imagine if I was making that without like access to internet, without playing other people's levels very much and without of course other people around who would criticize my levels or other people's levels. So without any access to like really examples of how to do things, to and I well, know. you would probably create something like Soldier of R Reich. Yes, exactly. And I think that uh, it's it's a big it's an interesting thing here because it was created. I I'm willing to bet that it was created in such uh, uh, conditions. And uh, okay, it goes on just kind of lower. And uh, so we can see that when the, the author doesn't really feel the pressure that comes with knowing what people usually think he lets his imagination run a bit wilder than normal but he isn't shy about like being completely lazy about things because people who don't have an eye of uh, for sorry for this kind of thing they just can say ah it's it's completely fine don't worry about it also i i bet i have to shoot here and maybe here Maybe that was not, not the best idea to shoot them both at the same time, but first. Uh, and s I feel, based on the levels that are more polished that I played for many games, and like even professional games, when you have the pressure of all the standards and all the guidelines to follow, uh, that some of them maybe you don't even agree with. Of course, that's not... Uh, I, I, I won't even say that that's norm, that you don't agree with how the things that uh, you follow when making your maps. But maybe some people don't, and uh, it really... You can see that it restricts what people want to do sometimes, because the levels that are polished are often very boring. And that's, that's just a question of the conditions, the environment that the level was made in. But uh, there's also a point about who is playing it, because I find that uh, as a person who with very var varying success have been mapping for like a very long time by now already uh, I cannot help but look at everything with a critical eye with an eye of a mapper it's very rare that I can play even like a commercial game that I don't really have to criticize at all I don't have to go and post feedback anywhere or make a let's play it's very rare that I can play them... Oh shit. Suddenly... 
Crusher that I can play a game or a level um, just like a, a player. I always played like a mapper. Also, I guess the blood patches on the ground would indicate where the crushers are. Hmm, interesting and dangerous. So yeah, but but some I don't know. Maybe it's just that I'm I don't really care when I'm playing by myself. And why I want to promote that kind of approach. Uh, so some projects like this and like of course which you mentioned the soldier of rake uh, is another such project that uh, makes me just completely forget that i want to be critical and completely nitpicky and play like i would play if i was like 10 years younger <laughs> and uh, innocent and ignorant of the big evil world of mapping and game design let's just put it like that you know, uh, you'll probably have to explain what Soldier of Reich is. I know, I'm not going to explain... I'm not going to explain shit, magic! So, uh, yeah, it's just imagine like this, but for serious sim, but a bit better made, let's say, a bit better made. Uh, so I was going somewhere with this. I don't know, maybe just the question door cannot be opened from here. Maybe just the whole question of uh, that when uh, people criticize maps, they usually, of course, want. Sometimes they just want to be. Uh, they do it out of spite of some kind, but often they just want to help the author uh, be up to standards that they think everyone should be up to if they want to make really good maps. But this, I know, this should be followed. These standards, I think, should be followed really, really. Uh, a lot more loosely than people do these days. Like the difficulty curve phrase that I brought up in the previous uh, session. It's like you can just say that and everyone will know what you mean and what you expect, what's the right way to do it. And I, I kind of wish more people, more games, more mappers challenged those kinds of traditions. Okay, what opened? Probably that thing that could not be opened from there. And like all these things that I'm seeing here so far, I am afraid, I'm a little bit afraid that the further we go in this world, the better the maps are going to get by those standards and they are going to get a bit more boring, maybe. Hopefully not, hopefully the, the, the spirit of uh, uh, this world will preserve, but who knows, we'll see. It's, it's actually going to be very interesting to see if I like the later maps less for some reason. Uh, because everyone, literally, I think everyone, maybe like one person didn't uh, agree that uh, the later maps are absolutely better in, in, in every way than these beginning maps. Say something, because people forget that you're here. Well, sometimes I forget that I'm here. <laughs> you just keep talking and talking, but that's a good thing, because I don't really have anything to say. Don't tell me you don't have any sort of opinion whatsoever at er, anything that I just said, because that, that would disappoint me greatly. Well, I'm not sure. I haven't really played many Doom Wads, so I don't really understand what kind of standards you're talking about. What's that over detail or, or, or what what are you talking about? I don't really get... Well, it's it's I think it could be extrapolated or whatever that word is actually to like any game at all. And the standards is of course many of the things. Yes, the uh, the level of detail. And I would agree usually that it needs to be consistent. But uh, people are. What I mean by that usually is that in Doom the people really really like doing this. They like making indoor sections that are really detailed, but then do a completely bare and empty outdoor section and say just, ah, I don't have the resources in my uh, budget to, I don't know, make it vanilla and still look good, but I, I want to make this huge outdoors area, so, well, you'll have to just be deal with it, being this uh, empty, bare, boring piece of crap. Well, I'm not and sure, how is it even possible to detail an outdoor area? Well, uh, if you look at the outdoor areas in this so far, especially the desert place in the last video, or maybe second to last video by now, if we cut before this, um, well, the mountains could be 
made more varied in height and color maybe sometimes the ground could be not so flat it could be well i i think there were a couple trees there so it's good okay uh i don't know something it's if you can't make something look not painful to the eyes then just don't make it at all i think but the other sort of uh consistency in detail is the one that i do not think people should really try to follow all the time is uh sometimes there's just nothing nothing uh, that you can come up with no detail that would be kind i don't know have any sort of meaning last time i mentioned like just corridors this here for example i i don't really i'm completely fine with this corridor because in a corridor like this there would be no detail anywhere it can't be there can't be in nature well in nature no not in nature like in the world there is a there is a place for bare and empty and boring places and doesn't mean that you should completely avoid making them in your levels but if you do don't go out of your way to just add some random geometry here and there like i don't know what uh, if you remember that room where i jumped on the coffins all the time and then the revenants spawned there yeah the, i remember that was pretty well detailed for uh, because there are a lot of columns and the coffins themselves and such but uh, if the author was some other author he would feel obligated in this corridor to make some holes in place of some the blocks in the wall or make some holes in the ceiling or the floor or add some i don't know indentations in the walls at least probably no one would add computers or freaking computer textures with the lamps on the sides that's just kind of stupid but uh, they would add like some uh, holes here with the hieroglyphs down there but that's not required like sometimes you can have a corridor that's just a corridor and it it if it's just like this small, it doesn't really hurt anyone's eyes, I think. But uh, the conventional way is to detail everything meticulously, completely, everything in a, the same, I don't know, with the same effort and same amount. So how I think if you look at like a painting, there is composition, there is like different colors, contrast, all that stuff. And for a painting, that's completely I mean fine but people are making levels or strive to make levels in such a way that wherever you are and wherever direction you look it's always like looking at a painting so there should be enough contrast in like every freaking se second corner and enough detail and the composition everywhere so there such like uh, like here like an empty corner that's not allowed because the player could stand here and look here and it does not look like a painting and that's just does not fly today and i think that's stupid because uh, irl n stuff rarely looks like a painting and so it makes it so freaking artificial so freaking i don't know it's just always it just screams i am here to make this look prettier just look at this angle and, and at this fancy piece of whatever it is I am, I mean, because I'm, since I'm doing the voice from the first perspective, the first person perspective, uh, look at me and marvel at my um, everything, at how I look, I guess. That, that really didn't go where I wanted it to go, but I think you may understand what I was trying to say. Well, yeah, I think I understand you, but that doesn't seem so super bad for me maybe that's because i haven't played these new levels uh, too much and that doesn't bother me as much as well it bothers you i haven't that, seen uh, much of this you know true but uh yeah i don't know maybe the, uh, i would not have an example a good example for you right off the bat because i don't remember in other games that we both played really sections that would uh, be really good examples but like uh, i don't remember did i give you my map 04 for the domain name only project that had like a canyon then a green base and a lava maze uh, down in the or did you ever see that in any way i am not sure well in any case there was a, a section in that map there was the first section was outdoors like a little canyon thing that i like to do uh and then 
And it was, people liked that because it was vanilla and it was, it looked nice for vanilla limits. And then you go into a base which was textured mainly in the green metal, you know those rectang rectangular green metal textures from Doom 2? Yeah, I think so. From Map 01 or Map 04. Like so, what's a, a Star 10? No, Star 10 is the smooth ones, but I'm talking about the uh, more rectangular ones. The really green ones, um, dang it. They, I, th I think they're called oh, yeah, the I, Tech, I, I tech Grand. Yeah, they also sometimes have blue things on them, blue triangles and other things. Um, and that base, well, it was all the walls were, were that green thing, and all the floors were the same color, and uh, the lighting was more or less even because, you know, me, the atmosphere guy, I was trying to make uh, something that felt like. Mm, I don't know, like a brightly lit building while outdoors, outside, it's evening. So like, I don't know, like if you stay at uh, your work or at university for like 8 p.m. and you look outside and it's completely dark, but it's brightly lit inside and it's like this mixed, mixed bag of emotions where you want to be home at this point in time, but it's pretty cozy here, so I, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Uh, and anyway, yes, I wanted to do that and for me I achieved that because I liked that. that's my favorite area of that map But most people were uh, complaining about that because it uh, It was too samey even if it was like three rooms and a couple corridors connecting them uh, Still uh, people did like that it was all textured the same way and that there was little lighting variation and stuff like that and I was completely no you are all wrong that's that that would be kind of it would be more uniform if I do it according to what you want because th then there will be an exciting outdoors area an exciting indoors area and then an exciting completely exciting uh, basement kind of place where I had uh, everything was dark and then was bright lava pools and holes and uh, cracks in the walls and stuff like that but I, I wanted to make that green place is like a, a area between the cool places so like a, a boring a boring stretch and they're all no that's bad don't do that of course i ended up caving in because it was a group project not just my project but uh i don't know it's it's things like that sometimes you don't need like heavy like sh pl playing with shadows or heavy lighting contrast or whatever but most people seem to think that without those it just looks kind of boring i don't know I, I don't know. This uh, this is completely going against what the majority of players think, so I don't even think if anyone takes to heart all my ramblings that it's going to be any useful because they're just going to disagree, because subjective tastes, stuff like that, they might agree with the, in theory, but they still then say that no, I still prefer the more painting looking like design and uh, okay, whatever. I'm left the only person who is going to make stuff in the style that I want and I am going to end up being the only person that would like that stuff, so it's kind of depressing. <sighs> I, I really wish I could uh, show you an example. Maybe I could like Skype show you uh, right now and then we'll resume the recording of this uh, from here. <laughs> Because that would, or I could maybe even know, recording that would be a bad idea in the middle of this. Yeah, let's just, also, are you still there? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, I anyway. am somewhere, that's for certain. We are going to be back in a second. And we're back again, and I showed Hippocat. Uh, I'm not seeing anything. Again. Yes, right, I forgot. <laughs> uh, I wonder what's going to record right now. Show window. Zoom. So I, I showed Hippocat that level and that place and I said what I thought about that place and he actually said that, uh, I don't know, I, I am not ready to believe him completely, but he said that uh, maybe I'm just looking into things too much when I say that uh, some design elements uh, that are usually regarded as the right thing to do they're just jumping out at me, screaming that they're there only because people want to enhance, I don't know, the excitingness of how the, the place looks, uh, sacrificing the naturality, I don't know how to say that. So it, it looks less natural because 
really very rarely in a life of even a space marine would things be magically arranged in such a way that wherever he looks it's just a completely beautiful area but uh, it makes i don't know people who play maybe maybe it's just yeah maybe some people play to get immersed in the game and some people play to just get entertained for like two hours uh, after work and in that case they want to uh, always look at the pretty places and always uh, mm, uh, i don't know they want to feel that all their effort is worthwhile so the exploration is rewarded uh, and everything else like that maybe it's that maybe it's just what you had said so i don't know of course uh, no, now no thinking about to... it are there even people who just play doom i think like pretty much everyone is a mapper for doom tried mapping or yes you know, know actually, something I... about mapping so maybe your concerns aren't so unjustified because uh, well I mapped for Doom, you mapped for Doom, I think pretty much everyone uh, on Doom World mapped for Doom, even Percussio mapped for Doom some. So, well, everyone is a mapper, so are there even just usual players who only play stuff without thinking how it all works? Are there such people? I think yeah. there should be a couple people at least. And that's not counting all the people who play Doom for some time or maybe played it in the past uh, who aren't on Doom World. But uh, then again, they would not play the custom levels because they would probably not find them. Also, because of my compatibility settings in Zdoom, all these, at least some of these bodies, are blocking me uh, from passing under them. That's funny. And by funny, I mean kinda annoying. Also, I wanted to say that this level is really confusing. But then again, of course, again, the, the same thing that. Uh, the gameplay also one of the points. The gameplay a progression where people usually tend to, to have the opinion that the player should know where he's going and what he's trying to achieve. And at any point when he's in a level he should know that... Uh, I don't know... What, what, what he's trying to do and how he's trying to do that. And sometimes like in these levels it's often uh, like... Uh, I'm just going wherever the bar is lower or wherever the teleport opens. And unless the level is too big so that I would get lost in it completely and not notice and forget where I went or where I didn't go, I think that that's fine, that's completely fine where you just go where you go, because it, uh, it feels more like you're looking for your way out instead of just like drifting along the stream wherever it takes you, just looking around at all the excitement that is happening around you. It's just another one of those points. Also, more and more a bit more tech-based tech textures, even though this texture could really be interpreted in any way possible. It could be an ancient Egyptian texture, but we're just so used that it's a tech texture. I can only see a green metal wall, nothing else. Metal? Yes. You are a freak of nature. This is clearly not metal. This is some kind of cement. Or are you so far behind that you're still seeing my map of four? For <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, maybe I'm just stupid. You know what I want to do? I want to make this demon... Well, forget about that. <laughs> I wanted to see if I can make him eat the revenant, but that isn't happening. At least You I don't got... tell demons what to do. Yeah, they, they... just to not do what I was wanting him to do, he just went and uh, died by a rocket. And I finally, for I, I think the, this is the first time I tried to make a Revenant Halo rocket thingy and I succeeded because I'm just that great at Doom. But now I, <laughs> now this room is much more dangerous because there's a rocket flying in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> yes! the first time I see that. It hit an imp and the imp died predictably. Wait, really? You, you never saw this trick before of like... Angling the rocket so it flies in a circle around you and can't home in anymore. No. Because people do that all the time, everywhere. I've never seen that. Wow, man. <laughs> wow, man. Also, what am I... What did I... You, uh, the thing... Again, the thing that your window here it obscures a bit of my HUD. Now I see that I don't have the red key and what did I even achieve? Oh, you I, are on the other side. Yep, I just noticed that, uh, that my familiar 10 looking rock ruins are there. And here we are 
So I guess I guess I thought correctly the first time when I asked the author, but then asked not to tell me that uh, half of it was like purely Egyptian and half of it is going to be Gothic. That's a little bit. Uh, I don't know. I'm torn. I really wanted to see a fusion of those two styles, but apparently I'm not. I, I think I'm not going to see it. I'm going to see that just half the episode is Egypt, half the episode is suddenly Gothic. And before this chasm appeared here because of the gods' fury or whatever happened, was this really the, the uh, like really clear border between a desert and this foresty area? That's kind of ridiculous. It's really ridiculous if you think about it. Well, yeah, it kind of is, but, you know, if gods are making huge chasms, maybe they can change the climate and everything. Hmm. I don't know. So that would mean that the guys in the desert build they, their temples and whatever structures, Egyptian style, but in an area maybe like this, and then it became a desert. So I would really... Actually, I've never seen Egyptian style architecture outside of like a desert uh, biome So it, it, it could have been interesting to see it before the split But I'm willing to wager, wager that the author didn't think that part through quite at all so If I asked him he would uh, say that, oh my <laughs> But maybe a bit more words than that also finish here Hmm, we are really going into the dark sinister gothic area, which is a little bit redundant considering that we were already in a fantasy medieval kind of place, but maybe this looks different enough. Morbus's Death Cathedral. Did you see Morbus in my last part? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do of me. It's, it's kind of <laughs> ironic that he settled in the place with more greenery than the other. He would definitely, if he was that Morbus, he would definitely go for the desert. Uh, so maybe it's not the same guy, maybe. Oh, it's also playing uh, Sinister from Doom 1. One of the better tracks. Of course, you cannot hear it. Do you know the tracks by name? No, only some it's, of them. It's, I think this map 6 of episode 2, the one that, where there's a fake exit and also the exit, the real exit. I is don't remember. Okay, so once again he basically said, look at this place, which is the only place you can go, you probably need to go there. And... Uh, How thoughtful. Yes. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, and also I... Uh, I was going to say, yeah, the music. The, do, do you at least remember Doom 1 levels enough to remember a level that uh, is memorable? Nope. That is a great question. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I haven't played Doom 1 as much as Doom 2. I, I'm going to try... Like, one clue, if you don't remember the beginning, that you probably don't remember it at all. Uh, at the beginning, you start in a little red room, and there is a... Like, you can open... go. There is KQ Demon and the switch behind him. And then you go in an open area with a lot of columns and a lot of sludge. And there is a corridor that you have run through with a sludge, and there are some medkits in it. There is also a berserk somewhere in there. I don't remember. Wow, man, you're a total noob! What are you yes, doing Yes, I am. Here? Perfect choice for, like, discussing <laughs> a, wa a what for the... Exactly. So, yeah, exactly like I said in the thread, I am a Russian guy who sucks at Doom and it's not very good at speaking English, so I'm doing Doom Let's Plays, of course. And uh, my guest is someone who doesn't remember anything about Doom, so, of course, I said that he should be a fine companion for discussing the intricacies of Doom mapping. Perfect! <laughs> also, we I think we are nearing actually... Well, we are past an hour in our call time. Even if we uh, uh, subtract the time that was showing you map 04, which was like 3 minutes most, and uh, the time before we started recording, that's also probably like 2 minutes most. I think this could be... We just entered the cathedral, the guy said, uh -huh, there is a signal from the cathedral. And uh, there is also the graveyard or something like that. At least, whatever that place is, is behind the graveyard looking fence. So I'm going to assume that it's a graveyard without really looking at it. And with these options, I think this is going to be a suitable place to finish. So, any closing thoughts, Hippocat? No. 
blow our minds, hypocrite here. You, you have to say something completely awesome to save this episode. I'd rather not. Why? Why do you betray me so? Because I am evil and I want you to suffer and fail at all times. You know, you may be evil, but you're also completely incompetent in it because there are much better ways to make me suffer and fail than agreeing to co commentate on my Doom Let's Play and then just be boring. But maybe that's the way that is most suitable to you. Yeah, it's very convenient. I don't really have to do anything, just be myself. <laughs> you should always try to be yourself, Hipcat, no matter what anyone says. Uh, and it's like I'm just kind of winking here at no one in particular. Because yeah, I'm giving him extremely bad advice. <laughs> ah, okay, whatever. Yes, let's not linger any longer. And uh, I think I said much more than I wanted to say. And I rambled a lot. And none of the points were coherent in any way possible. But that also kind of made me think that maybe they, I will never be able to uh, express them coherently. And in any way that people would think that it's not a completely stupid piece of bullshit. I will try, I will try, after the LP I'm going to make like a video about what can we learn from DTST or what uh, DTST made me think of. I think that's word for word exactly what I posted two days ago on the thread. But yes, I'm just saying this for you because you probably don't read the thread. You probably don't even know it exists. Well, uh, you've posted a link to that thread somewhere in the video description, I guess. And I've seen that thread but didn't really read it. Uh, typical, but yeah, yeah, I'm you know, I learned my lesson. I, 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 I've been burned on this now I know not to expect like any posts between this and next week when we next record, but that's fine That's okay. If you guys want to be dumb and not learn completely revolutionize Your approach to mapping and make better maps for me, and it's your loss. I guess stupid motherfuckers. Goodbye <laughs> Yeah, goodbye people.